Hey everyone, welcome back, or if you're just joining us, welcome to KSSP Podcast. I'm Spencer. And I'm Katie. Today we are going to be discussing racism, inequality, and general discrimination against drug users in our series on the drug war. So we will start off here. The beginning of the drug war, as the article we mentioned in the previous episode stated, was to target hippies and black people. So this war was never an issue of safety or lowering crime rates. In fact, they wanted to increase crime rates by arresting Nixon's political opposition. Today, black people are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than our white counterparts, despite comparable usage rate. So next, we're going to go to an article on drugpolicy.org, Race in the Drug War, and just lift off some stats here, some numbers. People of color experience discrimination at every stage of the criminal legal system and are more likely to be stopped, searched, and arrested, convicted, harshly sentenced, and saddled with lifelong criminal record. This is particularly the case for drug law violations. Nearly 80% of people in federal prison and almost 60% of people in state prison are in state prison for drug offenses are black and Latino. Research shows that prosecutors are twice as likely to pursue a mandatory minimum sentence for black people as for white people charged with the same offense. I'm assuming with the same priors as well, it doesn't say, but that's what I would assume. Among people who received a mandatory minimum sentence in 2011, 38% were Latino and 31% were black. Black and Nate Black people and Native Americans are more likely to be killed by law enforcement than other racial or ethnic groups. They are often stereotyped as being violent or addicted to alcohol and other drugs. Experts believe that stigma and racism play a major role in police community interactions. So more than 250,000 people were deported from the United States for drug law violations between 2007 and 2012. More than 13,000 people were deported in 2012 and 2013 just for marijuana possession. One in 13 Black people of voting age are denied the right to vote because of laws that disenfranchise people with felony convictions. One in nine Black children has an incarcerated parent, compared to one in 28 Latino children and one in 57 white children. Yeah, that's crazy. It's, yeah, no, that's it's ridiculous. It's not right. <laughs> no. And then I just have some information here on some other disparities too that are affected due to this war on drugs. And we're going to start with overdose disparity. So low-income communities and people of color are disproportionately impacted by this war on drugs as we've talked about. These groups already experience structural and systemic challenges, including discrimination, disinvestment, and racism. With overdose, there has been an exponential increase in drug overdose deaths, which has been partly due to the fact that the illicit drug supply has become increasingly unpredictable and contaminated. Between 1999 and 2020, estimates suggest that 1 million people died died of a drug-involved overdose. That's more people than some states have. I just want to point that out. Yeah. That's a lot of people. (laughs) So with the overdose disparity, their racial and ethnic minorities have been disproportionately impacted by overdose deaths since 2015. The biggest increase in overdose fatality rates has been experienced by people of color, and people of color and natives experience the highest overdose death rates across the U.S. today. And we may be wondering why. Well, a fentanyl-contaminated drug supply can be attributed to this most recent wave of overdose deaths. Another reason would be drug prohibition. And then fear of punishment and stigma due to criminalization prevents people from getting support. Yes. Lack of harm reduction and treatment services for people struggling. And then although those harm reduction interventions, which include supervised consumption spaces and heroin-assisted treatment, has been widely studied and found effective outside of the U.S., these strategies have not been widely adopted in the U.S. Yes, we'll definitely talk about that more. Yes. So then I also have here on employment disparity, 
People with drug-related convictions are often excluded from well-paid work just due to having that conviction. Yes. Not really due to anything else, just the conviction. Well, I mean, there may be obviously other factors that impact it, but just having that conviction is enough for some employment to deny you, which is obviously wrong on so many levels. Yeah. And then also housing disparity as well due to this war on drugs. So evictions often lead to unstable housing and or homelessness. And what happens to unhoused people who use drugs? Well, they're often forced into unsafe, unsanitary, and riskier injection and drug using practices in an attempt to avoid detection. Non-fatal or fatal overdose, infectious diseases, and syringe sharing are also increased with evictions and homelessness. A user and their trusted a user and their trusted seller's relationship may be disrupted by an eviction. And you may wonder why that would matter. Well, it ends up making an already unregulated drug supply even more unpredictable and riskier. So you may be wondering, why should I care? Like, these you know, people are committing more crime than the rest of the population. Well, more white people are becoming addicted to drugs as well. of young white American adults, and this is with ancestry from Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa, aged 18 to 25, reported that they were currently illicit drug users, according to one study by the National Survey on Drug Use and Health in 2017. White Americans have the highest rates of drug use and abuse, despite having lower arrest rates for drug use than other groups. All in all, drug use Drug abuse is a national issue that we need to address with all groups, and we must address it carefully, precisely, and non-judgmentally. So now that we've looked into racism and inequality due to the drug war, let's look at how ineffective it has been in actually helping people in our next episode. And as always, you can leave a comment if you have any ideas for future topics or themes, I guess, that you want us to do in future episodes. And you can reach out to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And we also do occasionally Twitch live stream. So follow us on there to catch us when we go live. And don't forget to like this video as well as follow or subscribe to the rest of our social media accounts so that you get notified of any of our other future content there. Otherwise, we will see everyone in the next video.